you. Um, I mean, when you look at, uh, since we've been grappling with the pandemics, uh, education is one of the sectors that have been hit hardest, uh, especially in times where, you know, whether countries or communities were going through lockdowns or schools were put on closure. Um, I think that's where we saw the hardest hit, just like the, you know, the, the, the bigger economy and other aspects of the economy, but education was one of those that were hit hardest. And, but on the bright side, I think um, uh, where, I th you know, the saying that goes necessity breeds invention. I think we've seen in many countries and especially across Africa, um, you know, different innovative ways being put to use to ensure that at least some level of learning um, is, is maintained, uh, even as we go through the pandemic. And also in, in many ways, I think the overall global objective was how do we uh, minimize the learning losses that we, we, we were going to experience going through the pandemic. Um, and even particularly when I look at Rwanda, but I think the, the, the examples I'll share are similar across you know, different African countries or developing countries where uh, we've um, thought about uh, making use of remote learning uh, platforms, uh, internet-based platforms, TV, radio, short codes, USSD, uh, digitizing curriculums as much as we can. Even in certain, um, you know, remote areas where you find schools and communities work partnering to see how they can print out this material, distribute it among the, you know, the schools and the the students that, of, of their communities, just to ensure that at a bare minimum, there's some learning that is still happening. So th there's been a silver lining, uh, even as we went through the pandemic, to even see how much innovations, how much invention, how, you know, people stepping up, you know, communities, parents, schools really stepping up to the task and trying to bridge that. And what we've seen over time, of course, it has also exacerbated the, the, the gaps, uh, uh, the digital divide gap in many ways it has, it has brought to light the vulnerabilities that we have, um, you know, within our different communities. But interestingly, I think what you've also seen is that for those that have, they've been able to, think about their ability to have a blended approach of learning online and kind of in person where it was possible and where it was never possible, it was always online or radio and TV. But I think post the pandemic to your question, I th we're going to see more and more a blended learning approach going forward. Um, we, the world is not going to return to what we knew it before, definitely. Uh, but also I think it's also a good thing and a blessing because as you see how teaching and learning are going to be uh, transformed, we're going to see more targeted and personalized learning, um, flexibility and collaboration in the ways we teach and learn. And um, even just the ability to know that learning is now not limited to the school environment. Um, how do we ensure that even out of the classroom, students are continuing to learn um, what the role of parents and communities, I think, has been very strong during the pandemic. And so it's going, I, I think no one wants to go back to before because now you understand, uh, you know, that responsibility in ensuring, ensuring that, uh, you know, we, we minimize learning losses as much as possible. So in brief to your point, I think um, we're going to see more and more blended approach of learning. Uh, there's going to be very targeted investments, especially for, um, you know, the remote areas and rural communities to ensure that, you know, we, we have a level playing field, the schools have the same access that, you know, private schools would have, schools in, uh, in cities, in, in urban areas would have. And I think this, that has been, you know, the, the beauty about this, you know, shedding these light on these vulnerabilities, but also making sure that as we go forward, as we make investments collectively, uh, we are thinking about, um, you know, bridging that digital divide.